Victor Muckett, known as the Skopinski Maniac, returned to his home in the Ryazan region two days after leaving the colony, where he served an almost 17-year sentence. Listen to the story about a pervert who was released from the colony. Maniacs live among us and everyone should know the psychological portrait of a criminal. Perhaps someday it will help save someone's life. Viktor Vasilievich Mokok was born on June 22, 1950 in the city of Skopin, Ryazan region. He lived without a father with his single mother Elisa Valentino. He served in the army, graduated from a technical school, having received the profession of a mining foreman, but did not work a day in his specialty. Since the Skopinski mines were closed. After Viktor Vasilievich went to work at the plant, he was a drummer of labor. The best locksmith and was distinguished by an exemplary biography of a Soviet citizen. He was awarded certificates and even accepted into the Communist Party. Mokak admitted that in his youth, his personal life did not go well. Despite his tall stature and strong build, the man was married but divorced three months later. News reports pushed him to kidnap when another maniac was being tried in the late 90s. Alexander Komen from Vyotskai Polyny, who organized an underground sewing workshop in the garage, where he used slave labor, while the captives were sitting in the basement of his house in Skopin. Mokak in the outside world continued to live an ordinary life. He had a sexual relationship with a woman he knew. On September 30, 2000, Mokak abducted two underage girls aged 14 and 17 years old. On the day, a church holiday was celebrated in Ryazan in honor of the Christian martyrs. A concert with famous artists and fireworks took place in the city center. Elena Somakina and Ekaterina Martinova walked to the bus stop. The kidnapper was driving by with his accomplice, who cut her hair short and posed as a guy. The woman's name was Elena Badukina, she learned to imitate men's habits in prison where she was serving time for theft. The criminals offered to give the girls a ride, they gave them vodka and wine in the car, where the sedative was mixed. The prisoners ended up in the dwelling of a maniac who drove them into a bunker, equipped in the underground at a depth of 6 meters. Concrete floors and iron hatches muffled any sounds, there was ventilation and electricity. Previously, the maniac had already managed to test the dungeon on a defenseless victim, which a few days later broke free, because Mokak did not hang the lock on the front door. She decided to tell about the terrible case only later, when the criminal was discovered. The prisoners were subjected to regular violence. Elena got pregnant, she had to give birth in the basement. Mokak, being careful, did not descend, instead he threw her a medical guide. Martinova had to give birth to two children. By the time of her release, Samakina was carrying a third child who had died in childbirth. The rapist who had appeared earlier was taken to Skopin and left in a conspicuous place. Later they were taken to an orphanage and given to adoptive parents for adoption. The kidnapper claimed that he had fatherly feelings for them. The victims periodically pondered how to escape, for example, they wanted to scald Mokok with boiling sunflower oil when he comes down. But they did not find the courage to bring their plan to life. They were freed thanks to a lucky chance. The maniac rented a room to a medical student and took Catherine to visit the girl, introducing his niece. Martinova, having waited a moment, pulled out a note, which had been hidden in advance, from her hair, in which she had exposed the kidnapper, and put it in the cassette holder. It took the investigators a lot of work to split Mokak, and he indicated where he hid the girls. The captives were released on May 4, 2004. On March 3, 2021, Mokak was released after spending 17 years in prison. Martinova in an interview with a federal channel said that such a period seems too short for the torturer. According to her, at the trial, he was amazed at such a harsh sentence, expected less, because he did not kill anyone. From the conclusion he called Catherine a liar, promised to state his version of terrible events upon release. 
The man also started a social media account with a fake name and other people's photos, through which he tried to find an author for writing an autobiography. The criminal told reporters that he was not an evil person. Now he repents of his deed and communicated with the captives politely, although he persuaded to have sex against his will. Mokok was going to return to his small homeland, and his neighbors and victims were terrified. Psychiatrist Vladimir Feinzelberg warned the public that in 98% of cases people, sex offenders, especially pedophiles, go back to what they were doing. Years later, Ekaterina Martinova published a book where she told the story of the abduction and nightmare days in captivity at the Skopinski Maniac. These terrible events were devoted to documentaries, The Right to Hope, from the cycle, Criminal Russia. Prisoners of the Dungeon, Honest Detective, and Underground Monster. As well as the release of the program, New Russian Sensations, on October 4, 2020. Mokov's mother assured that she saw the girls at the site, but did not suspect anything, considering them to be her son's acquaintances. The perpetrator regularly wrote letters to her from prison. In one of them he asked to send raisins, oatmeal cookies and crosswords. In general, because of such perverts, it is necessary to change the criminal code. Someone's lives are in danger. Perhaps these are the lives of our children. After all, right now you can expect anything from the maniac mock-up. What do you, viewers of our channel, think about this, write in the comments. And also do not forget to share this video on your social networks. Press the subscribe button and the bell for new movie notifications. Please move on to other videos that you currently see in the end screensavers.